Welcome everyone. Uh, we're thrilled to have you here. Our session, this is the second session that we're hosting on Better Together to Advance Gender Equity with a focus on the Gender Equity Index. Um, we're very pleased to have uh, two panelists with us who I'll introduce in a moment. Um, but quickly, why we're here and uh, the, the main objective of today is to really show you how the Gender Equity Index is relevant to your current work. We have a diversity of participants from around the world, representing farmer organizations, representing traders, um, service providers, not-for-profit organizations, development organizations, uh, coffee roasters, cocoa brands, uh, chocolate brands. So um, the idea is that really everyone across coffee, cocoa, agriculture broadly, everyone has a role to play. And the power of the gender equity index and this approach is to really help you highlight uh, and understand what your role is and how the gender equity index approach can help you meet your objectives. So we have uh, really three parts of the conversation today. We want to highlight the context for gender in coffee and cocoa. Uh, I think everyone that's joining today understands and recognizes the, the importance of the issue of gender equity. So we're not gonna dig into uh, too much as to you know, the background and data as to why it's important because I, I assume we're all on the same page here, but we do want to ground ourselves in the context for gender in coffee and cocoa hearing from our, our panelists. And then also moving into understanding the opportunity of the Gender Equity Index. We have had uh, other webinars in the past to highlight the Gender Equity Index, but I think um, now that the tool is available and being put into use, we can actually understand more clearly the real opportunity that's presented. And then finally, towards the end of the conversation, we uh, we want to talk to everyone and and uh, share how you can get how you can get involved in this in this work. I'm thrilled uh, to and pleased to welcome Kelly Amoroso. She's been a longtime friend uh, and ally of Partnership for Gender Equity, now Equal Origins. She's the coffee and tea buyer uh, and heads up innovation at Allegro Coffee. Many of you know Kelly, so we're thrilled to have Kelly here. And then also Pam Schreier. Uh, Pam has been a key ally with regards to the Gender Equity Index. She has a big role at Ecom uh, with Coco Sustainability, and um, we're very pleased to have have both of them here. So this conversation really is about hearing from them. Um, Greg and I will work to set a sort of a context, and then we'll um, move through and invite Kelly and and Pam um, to 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 compliment as we go along. So quickly to highlight the role of women in coffee and cocoa production is significant. Um, the data demonstrates that nearly 70% uh, of labor in coffee and cocoa production is done by women. There, there are uh, reports from the International Coffee Organization and, um, and cocoa industry organizations that highlight the importance uh, and the integral role of, of women in, in production of both crops. Yet, um, even with these critical roles, uh, women are often excluded from decision-making processes. Um, they don't necessarily access proportional compensation, and they have less access to vital resources that are available to, to their male counterparts. And in particular, we know that uh, of the vocational education that is offered in both sectors, only about 20% of the participants in vocational education programs being offered are, uh, are women. And so this represents an important gap in terms of um, the number, the amount of women and the amount of labor that's actually done by women and the access that they have to this important resource of vocational training. And so what, what we've learned in some of the research that we've conducted is there, there really isn't one single reason that women are not participating. Um, 
and that this solving this particular issue where this important uh, resource in the coffee and cocoa sectors that um, to make it available and make it where it reaches and benefits women equally to men, it requires a comprehensive approach. And so this really is what the gender equity index is looking to address. So I want to both Pam and Kelly have extensive backgrounds in uh, in their their field. Pam lived a long time in uh, in Ecuador, right, right? And Kelly also has spent significant time um, in producing countries. And so I want to hear um, from them, maybe starting with Kelly, a little bit about you know, your journey in gender equity and and some of the challenges and opportunities you see with regards to gender. Um, it, it, in your work. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Kimberly. And thanks um, to you guys for inviting us to be here today. It's a pleasure to be with you. And for all the folks that are joining, um, it's great to have you here and um, share your interest in advancing this initiative. Um, I think, you know, uh, as you mentioned, we've been in the industry for a while. And one of the things that I've observed over the course of the last 20 years is this recognition that women are very much involved in the coffee harvest and the in the product and eventually the quality of it and getting it all the way through to us as buyers. Um, they are very much involved because of the of the way that coffee is processed and it's a family activity. And over the years, I've identified well, you know, women are are very much a part of this activity, but they don't always see the access and the opportunities to get involved with access to market or vocational education. And in the work that I've done previously, if you make some minor adjustments, I think that that's one of the things that allows them to get more involved. And I think we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on in the webinar. But in terms of what, what Allegro has done and what um, we continue to pursue is really, we started in 2012 with a women produced coffee that we started in Peru. Um, Christy Thorns, my predecessor and mentor, she was the one that really started that uh, work with um, our partners down there and identifying, selecting out particular lots that were produced by women. And we were able to pay premiums to them. Um, and that created some more economical benefit and incentive for them to continue the work. And I think that was really the first step into gender equity was for Allegro. And I think in general, there's a lot of um, small roasters out there that are supporting women produced coffee. We see that in specialty world. Um, and I think that that's a great first step, but what about those women that are still doing 70% of the work in those coffees that are being grown and produced and sold to commodity level um, coffee? So that's where I think the Equal Origins and Partnership for Gender Equity and specifically the Gender Equity Index really helps advance that initiative to give opportunities for all women that are producing different types of coffee. And I think that's one of the things that uh, we support Equal Origins to further advance this work. The other thing I like about it is um, part of the legwork we did developing the framework around what eventually became the GEI was really a, a many actors, supply chain actors involved in contributing um, to the framework around gender equity and then the common terms and the common language on how we're gonna talk about this. So that's what I would say is there's still more work to do, but women's coffee was our first step. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Pam, tell us a little bit about uh, what you see with regards to the context of uh, gender and sustainability in your, your work. Yeah, well, thank you for having me here. I'm very excited. Um, we, we know also that uh, women are involved in, in cocoa production. They play a really important role um, in key activities much like coffee and, and harvesting and other activities on the farm. And we also know that there, the sustainability, the larger sustainability challenges we face in cocoa, such as deforestation and child labor, are linked to, to issues and causes that most definitely involve women and the entire family if we're looking to find solutions. Um, so we really may need to make sure that you know, our, our teams are equipped um, to be able to, to take on these challenges and involve them in, in the solutions we find in the programming make sure it's available to both men and women and at times um, really work towards kind of empowering women, not just reaching them. So we saw our work with Equal Origins and being involved in the 
the development of the gender equity index is, is very important to, to understand how we can equip our own teams to kind of move along the, the spectrum that we've talked about. I'm sure <laughs> we'll explain that a bit more as the, the webinar goes on, but um, to show that, you know, our teams and like the people that we work with, because I spent a lot of time in the field, as Kimberly said, and, and we know our field staff is, is largely male. Um, but it's important to, to get the information to them that they too can play an important role in this. And even on a uh, kind of local level, be a force for transformational change just by understanding themselves how, how um, what, what it actually takes to reach gender equity, what actions can they, can they take and make kind of make the, the whole effort very tangible and some, instead of something that seems like such a large idea and really hard um, to take on as one person. Thanks, Thanks. Pam. Thanks, Pam. And, and um, you know, the gender equity index has really been developed sort of as a logical extension of uh, the market access programs like women's coffee and, and women's cocoa, um, and then an extension of very specific, you know, um, projects that are focused to deliver services specifically to women to, to offer additional capacity building and, 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 and skill building and, and opportunity in that way. And from your own perspective, one of the one of the, the the key performance indicators that I know that you tend to look at are attendance at um, uh, at agronomy training, good agricultural practices training, uh, post processing uh, training, agroforestry projects, nursery projects. You're you're you have visibility on on who's attending these programs, and just curious as to what do you think is the long term impact of of, of seeing these uh, numbers remain quite low in terms of women's participation. I mean, I think it has a large economic impact on, on the potential. So it's more a loss of potential income for the farming households um, if they're not participating in those, those areas. Um, also, there's just, kind of small challenges to their participation. For example, kind of systems have been set up with certification and other things that the data collected is based on kind of one member of the household who's usually the male. So then they're they're a bit hidden in, in the whole process, even though they're very involved in the production, but not letting them access the trainings or kind of, ac well, it's usually not intentional if, if they're not attending the trainings because they're not the kind of registered farmer. Um, it really limits the, the, their potential on the farm to actually develop their skills and be able to improve production as kind of a family unit. So we see it's a, it's a huge risk in terms of future production. And, and do you see the efficiency of your sustainability portfolio being compromised when <laughs> half the half the labor force is, is not accessing these new skills and concepts? Yeah, of course. And also just, I mean, outside of the agronomy on the farm, it's also just the other types of activities we have. If they don't reach women, we won't see the changes we need to really tackle those challenges, such as child labor or, or deforestation, which come from larger issues related to poverty. So we really need them to be able to participate in, in the economic activity of the family. I think it's super important to highlight the fact that you know this isn't about intentional discrimination, um, and uh, but when a when these capacity you know when good agricultural practices training is developed primarily by men, primarily for men, um, that inevitably um, it is going to be more suited for men, and it will feel exclusive uh, to to many of the participants to to uh, that male female dynamic. Um, but there really are some small changes that can be made, such as timing of the trainings and and um, those kind of things that are really practical. And that's where we kind of see that the GEI can help build those in and just make, as I said, the this make it not such a large kind of issue that's even hard to, to know where to start, 
but just start with really small actions that can can just have a huge impact. Fantastic. Thanks. Great. Thanks so much to you both. And I realize, Greg, I didn't introduce you. Uh, for, so for those oh. of you that don't know, uh, Greg Minahan has been my a uh, colleague and uh, thought partner in the design of the gender equity index and approach uh, now has worked with Equal Origins for about two and a half years. So we're thrilled to have him on the team and have invited him uh, also with me to uh, help facilitate the conversation. So you'll be hearing from him throughout as well. So I'd like to turn, that was a great segue into talking about the gender equity index, and we'll want to hear more from Pam and Kelly about how they see the application of the GEI in their role. Um, the gender equity index was developed throughout uh, 2021 and into 2022 with input from and, uh, and financial support from a variety of companies, including both Allegro and Ecom and a number of others. Um, we also brought these uh, industry experts uh, or industry participants together to provide input to make sure that the gender equity index really would be a valuable tool to suit the needs and the opportunities that we see in both sectors. We also brought together a panel of gender experts from uh, the development sector, the ac academia, research, uh, and, and others to help inform the design and to make sure that we were really bringing together the best, best practice from the development sector into alignment with the need and the opportunity in the agricultural sector, especially focused on coffee and cocoa. So we ended up with uh, five domains of gender equity. You see them here. Uh, the main thing I want to highlight in this slide is that we aligned the domains with the reach, benefit, empower, and transform framework of the International Food Policy Research Institute. And so again, what this allows for is for uh, the, the coffee and cocoa sectors and the users of the gender equity index to really align the, the, the business aspects of their work with the broader uh, best practice in, in development. What we're solving for specifically is the lack of access that, that women have to vocational education. So back to the first slides, even though women provide more than half of the labor in agriculture, they're not benefiting and accessing these important services that are made available to them. This is a vital productive resource provided not only by the private sector, but also the development sector as well. Um, uh, many, many uh, government, both European, US, international development uh, funders are uh, funding extension and advisory services. And there's a growing recognition and desire that these services are, um, are, are done and provided in a gender equitable way. So just a quick snapshot of the report, and we, we do invite you and we'll, and we'll give you the information at the end of the webinar for you to go in and, and check it out. Um, what we have found is that even by people taking the gender equity index, it starts to open up new ways of thinking just by asking the questions and considering uh, how your organization works with regards to gender equity. So. You see there's uh, a score and a domain um, breakdown, uh, and then there are actually specific recommendations by domain. And then uh, for every question, there is actually recommendations per question where, where the, um, the test taker has not received a, a, an advanced score. They actually receive um, uh, a recommendation for each question. I want to take a moment here to highlight that where we're getting to is, is really this recognition of how we've been working in, uh, in agricultural service provision and sustainability programming, whereby the vast majority of the investment, we think um, uh, hun hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars going into training and investment in good agricultural practices, nursery development, these key components that you see here. And then what happens is there tends to be a smaller siloed investment to um, 
almost as a kind of a, a box checking exercise because USAID or GIZ or other development agencies are saying, hey, you know, you have to include something uh, for, for women to make sure that you're addressing the needs of women. So what often happens is that there's a siloed approach and um, we know that this often is uh, investments in village savings and loan programs, which are of critical importance, um, often to uh, products, women's coffee and women's cocoa products, women's leadership. And all of those are really significant and important opportunities that we need to do more of. At the same time, um, what we're trying to get at here with the gender equity index is that integration is the key. So really integrating a gender equity approach across all of these project and service components and, and, and then being able to once, once we have the, the gender approach in the other components, still having a focus on targeted programs that will help drive greater empowerment and transformation of the context in which women are working. Um, Greg, is there something you'd like to add on this? I think you're on mute. Yeah, thank you, Kimberly. Um, the when 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 services are primarily being offered as a standalone program what happens in the organization delivering those services is that there are gender experts then and program experts that are, that whose responsibility it is to provide skills and training to women but when you open up to these other integration strategy what becomes clear is that everyone on the team has a role to play in ensuring gender equity development. This now becomes, uh, there's a role for somebody who does program design. There's a role for somebody tracking budgets and doing accounting. There's a role for, um, the, for m and &E and even things like database design to ensure that there's gender equitable uh, uh, gender disaggregated data collection is possible. So what happens through the process of the gender equity index is that the entire team begins to see what their personal role is in terms of ensuring gender equity. I think that's the transformative uh, opportunity that we're looking at here. If your team right now has a conception that gender is for the gender expert to do, and that gender doesn't really have anything to do with good agricultural practices training or regenerative ag, that, that these are just sciences and they're very objective. And there's um, that should tell you that you have a barrier to women in that. But once people begin to see the, the go through the process of the five different domains, what you begin to see is that everybody does have a role. And this is what the process and the methodology of the GEI brings is, is an opportunity for you to self-identify what your personal role is in the context of your specific <clears throat> responsibilities. Thanks, Greg. I want to turn and invite uh, Pam and then Kelly to share a bit about uh, what they see possible with the gender equity index. They've already started to touch on it uh, in the earlier part of this, this conversation. But first, before I invite Pam to say a few words, I want to highlight that uh, we're thrilled that Ecom, uh, one of the largest trading companies in the world uh, for cocoa and coffee, but uh, in cocoa specifically, publicly committed to their customers and partners in their first ever Coco Sustainability Report, congratulations, Pam, <laughs> um, that our next steps as a company, as Ecom, uh, will be to have 100% of the Cocoa Origin supply chain covered by the GEI. And as you can see there with some of the, the uh, numbers on the right-hand side of the screen, that's significant in terms of the reach of the company and the potential impact of, of the company. And so we're uh, 
want to really congratulate Pam and the and the ecom team for for making this commitment and taking this important step uh, because it does imply uh, not only an impact across the ecom team but then that leadership role that you're playing in terms of highlighting the need and the opportunity uh, will really uh, is reverberating throughout uh, the both sectors coffee and cocoa so so Pam, please, I'd love to hear uh, you share a bit more about uh, this decision, why, why you felt um, that this was the right decision for your company and what you see as the potential and the opportunity of the Gender Equity Index. Yeah, of course. So um, over the period of development of our Smarter Cocoa Charter, which is what we launched earlier this year with our first report, um, we talked a lot about you know, how to incorporate gender. And a lot of the themes that that Greg mentioned about integration are, are what came up specifically from, from my experience and the experience of my colleagues at Origin. We really wanted to, to do something that would help kind of not make gender a separate activity, but really integrate it in everything we do um, and kind of make it an underlying commitment uh, throughout, you know, not just one specific thing in a, in a siloed attempt. So um, we, kind of in the same moment had the opportunity to work with Equal Origins on the development of the GEI um, and kind of express that interest along with many other companies in, in coffee mainly um, and kind of feel like this tool is the perfect tool for us to, to work towards that goal. So the idea and what we've committed to is implementing the tool across all the origins where we work and have field teams and then using the the kind of reporting that comes out of it or the plans that come out of it to, to build our strategy and gender, both on a local context, so by each origin and then also at a global context. So what we really like about the index is that um, it, it creates kind of a common language across all our teams. Um, we know that not every origin is gonna be at the same place in their journey. And we know that they're gonna have strengths and weaknesses that differ across um, regions, across countries within regions. But we really see this as, you know, uniting everyone to use the same team or tool would really facilitate the conversation around gender between all our teams and be able to kind of foster that cross learning that we can get through, you know, experience with different programs at different origins, but then also really have kind of concrete activities that come out of it so that they know how, how they can participate in moving towards gender equity, which is really the most important part because our, our kind of the most employees we have at Ecom, the largest group of employees is our field staff. So we need to make sure that we have a way to, to help them see how they can kind of um, commit to this process and also contribute to it. So, so we see that this tool is, is a great place to start for us and will help us kind of evaluate that progress along the way. So it's not just a one and done thing, but rather we do it in the beginning, see where we are, create a plan, start to implement, implement that plan, and then keep going, um, keep evaluating ourselves and seeing how, how we're moving forward. Fantastic. Thanks, Pam. We'll have some other questions for you about that, Pam, but first we'll go to Kelly and have uh, Kelly say a little bit. Uh, reflect on the gender equity index for Allegro. Oh, thanks. No, I think I just really want to echo and what Pamela said, I think equally applies to the coffee supply chain. Um, the tool gives us an opportunity to engage in the supply chain partners. It creates the common language. Um, it, it, it really is very similar to the actions that they're taking in COCO. Uh, it allows us to begin a conversation with folks that maybe haven't thought about that. Um, and what I like about the index is it's applicable to all supply chain actors. So whether you're an exporter, you're a producer, you're an importer, we've even taken it as roasters. Um, and so I think that's one of the things that makes it um, a very easily and approachable and welcoming step into that journey. Um, it also allows us as buyers, we don't have a sustainability department. So a lot of the responsible sourcing lives with us as buyers and allows us to really be able to identify and measure how we can make investments in our partners at origin to continue in, in uh, gender equity and women empowerment. 
Um, and then as it, precisely what Pam said as well is it's a continuous improvement. It's something that we can identify, create the plan, Allegro gets involved, supports those plans um, and those projects through funding or a premium then uh, you can go back and take the gender equity and index and then um, uh, identifies continuous improvement. Um, so we've supported the gender equity and supply chain through a variety of ways, either through premiums or funds or specific uh, workshops. Um, we've all know that coffee is a family activity. I think one of the things that I sense in my industry, because when I started in this industry, there was only a handful of women. And I think that's it's great to see it evolve. Um, and I have to say that what I sense is that in our industry, men tend to think that this is an isolated subject, kind of what Kimberly was talking about it earlier, where it's kind of a separate but equal initiative. And that's a, a false sense that I, I don't think that that's really the way gender equity will be addressed or should be addressed. I think it should be something where women and men are working together, together and equal rather than separate, but equal. And I think men um, are also have a shared responsibility in this. Um, they can enable and empower um, within their organizations, within the way that they're carrying out trainings, within the way that they're carrying out a decision-making on and taking women's empowerment into consideration and being mindful and aware of that impact when they make those decisions. So I think that's one of the things that in my industry, that's what I feel like is there's work to be done there on educating about that. And the gender equity index does that. And then finally, I, um, you know, the way these workshops or gender equity awareness is um, shared, I think there's specific workshops about household duties and make and you know how that can be shared within a a, a, a household coffee producing family. Uh, but then there are these simple adjustments like okay, I'm going to go attend this vocational training around good agricultural practices. You know, is there someone that can watch the kids for me or the timing of that or the location of it? Oh, well, it's too far. Is there a way to uh, carry out this training that's closer? Is there, those are the types of things that are really small changes that can have a huge impact in meeting this objective and, and advancing the initiative. Thanks so much, Kelly. Um, I want to highlight a couple of things that both Pam and Kelly have, have pointed to and then come back to um, more of a discussion around the opportunity. Um, both Pam and Kelly talked about the um, not only the gender equity index, but the development plan, right? And, and really the importance and the priority where the where we're trying to get to is that every company, that every organization that's especially on the ground, providing services to farmers and farmer organizations, that they have a gender equity development plan in place. The assessment itself is the foundation for that. Uh, I want to highlight that the GEI, the data is not public. The data is your data. The tool really is meant to be an internal tool for you to be able to use uh, in, in the way that is effective in terms of driving uh, awareness and engagement on gender equity. And that the, the key really is the plan. And then as Pam pointed to, the um, taking the gender equity index on a consistent basis so that then you can see over time how the scores improve and, and increase in different domains. And then being able to really use that as a way to uh, communicate progress internally, sharing experience across teams, sharing experience with um, market partners, investors, funders, and other allies, and really driving this conversation on gender equity forward uh, over time, because we know that gender equity is a journey. It's not, you don't flip a switch. And so this is something that we know that we'll be engaging with year over year, and that the gender equity index uh, it is a foundational piece to be able to help uh, drive and shine the spotlight on on progress being made and um, uh, and then the continuous improvement that can happen along the way. 
And, and finally, um, you know, really uh, both Pam and Kelly touched on this as well, is that the, the language, um, those of you that have, are involved with uh, quality standards for, for coffee and, and cocoa and other agricultural products, we've designed this very specific language on coffee quality and cocoa quality that can help um, uh, really drive engagement help take especially something like gender equity that's been that is kind of has been perceived as nebulous or nuanced or um, challenging to talk about if we have a common language it brings it into more of a of a business language that we're clear that we um can use across uh, different countries up and down the supply chain and really co create this sort of a cohesion in the way that we speak about gender equity, again, that can drive impact and, and change. So I'm um, gonna pause the, the slideshow here for a moment. And uh, yeah, just wanna spend a few minutes with um, uh, Kelly and, and Pam and, and Greg, please feel free to uh, add uh, any, any input that you'd like to add and also um, guide, some, guide some questions potentially from, from Kelly and Pam about, um, you know, where are we going from here? What, what do we see? Um, uh, as as next steps with the gender equity index, you know, I I think for you know one of the things that I've heard both from Kelly and Pam was this concept that this is a journey. Um, I'm reflecting on my own uh, awareness building on gender equity over the last three years, and it has developed um, and it, it grows from multiple conversations that happen over time. And, and, uh, um, and so when we're looking at our extension and service providers, um, providing something as simple as providing that space to have these conversations during those times where staff capacity is the focus um, is, is absolutely fundamental. And it moves it out of the realm of um, uh, it moves it out of the realm of making it somebody else's responsibility to to really one's own personal journey and and personal advocacy for for this. So um, that that's just a comment that 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 I'm pulling from both Kelly and Pam. Um, but uh, I, I can see that that's also how their own uh, gender awareness has developed. Kelly, you mentioned we started with women's coffee and a women's product and this market access. Um, and it's really that was the first steps on the journey. And, uh, and that has led you to new awarenesses of, of what's needed and your commitment to really, you know, having a gender equity development plan in place and then being able to talk about progress on that plan this is a this is a new um, approach and and it's and it's in conjunction with hey we offer this specific women's project like like uh, uh, village savings and loan program for instance which which we see happening a lot at origin um, that's an, an important pillar and an important program to deliver um, but it's certainly other, and there's not that integration um, into all these other investments. So uh, it's 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 an exciting time to to begin to to think about uh, uh, what's beginning to happen, and and this and and being able to sort of steward this journey in a in a respectful way, um, and and in a slow stepwise way as well, um, uh, meeting people where they're at, and uh, just allowing the space for these conversations. Thanks, Greg. Pam, I think, Kelly, yeah. Sorry, just to add to that, but I think it's sometimes hard also just to, to, to know what your influence actually can be and what impact you can actually have. Um, so it, it's good to have something like this that can help us kind of benchmark it along the way to really open up those conversations with our, our own staff to understand like they themselves as an individual can have a lot of impact on it by, you know, when they arrive at the farm, having a conversation with, instead of, I mean, a lot of times what happens is a male technician arrives at the farm and 
only uh, the female is the only one that's there, the the wife, and not the you know certified husband who who is in the program. So they don't know exactly how to interact with them, and even the the female herself is like, oh, he's not here. You know, you should come back another day. But if they have some way to kind of counteract that conversation and say, no, I mean, how are you doing? You know, like, how is this going on the farm? If they know that they can kind of push to continue that conversation, they're having a huge impact just with that one interaction. And I think, you know, being able to, to like teach our teams and kind of have those larger conversations that as an individual, you can have a lot of impact and influence and really understanding what your, your influence is, is, is important. But this, you know, our participation in the GEI lets us open the door for those kind of interactions and really bring those topics up, which are relatively simple steps, but, um, but do have a, a big impact. Thanks, Pam. One of the things that uh, is most exciting for me also about hearing hearing you talk and other partners talk uh, and, and what we know from the Gender Equity Index is that it really is a, a tool um, that can help everyone be successful, right? Um, you know, you can envision your your uh, story of the the agronomist going out and really not necessarily knowing how to engage with a with a female or that it's appropriate for him to engage with a female and how. And so, even just by being able to um, shift the, the the individual agronomist and the agronomist team their their perspective and what is their role and how can they uh, approach different participants at the at the farm level, that that really is a way for them to be successful in, and have a greater impact in these everyday uh, visits that they're making. So, um, Kelly, would you like to add something? Um, just real quick, I think, uh, and and like Pamela said, one of the things, because I've been participating in some of the workshops, and something that really resonated with me in the last workshop was because women are, are typically very shy when um, agronomists show up or in big settings, um, I think I heard one of the cooperatives say that what they are doing is inviting women to talk about, oh, well, how did you get in coffee? Or we all have a common denominator and that's coffee or cocoa. And how did you end up in this? Is it something that your family had or you've been doing this since you were a little girl and now you're working on a coffee farm as well. So really creating a space or asking the questions so that they feel like they have a voice or they have a way to contribute to a, a conversation. And that can be just as simple as, oh, well, you know, how did you end up in coffee? Or the, I think just those simple questions of a, a topic where they feel confident to, to talk about, because we all are in coffee and that's, you know, we probably have something to share in our history. So I think get, creating a space and giving them an opportunity um, and the confidence to, to talk about their background in coffee. And then the second thing I wanted to share is there is huge economical impact and benefit to anyone that participates in this. I mean, we've seen quality improvements um, just, you know, from the folks that take that have been involved in gender equity. Those quality improvements lead to premiums and then the cooperatives benefit themselves or the farming partners of farmer groups benefit themselves because they'll see premiums and economic incentives for them to continue that quality. And then we will make repeat purchases with them because it's become a really longstanding partnership. And so there's a lot of benefits besides just creating a space for women. I think there is an economical impact as well. Thanks, Kelly. I want to uh, highlight what Kelly is talking about in terms of the workshops where she's participated, uh, Allegro, along with um, Cacao Latitudes, which is the specialty uh, cocoa arm of, of Ecom, uh, have both funded farmer organizations to participate in our uh, recently adapted online vir virtual learning journey for farmer organizations. And the whole idea is that we bring together farmer organizations in an online conversation to uh, first understand where they are on the gender equity journey. So uh, responding to the gender equity index, then looking at the report of the gender equity index for producer organizations. So just to highlight, we have two different versions of the gender equity index. One 
is for uh, extension and advisory service providers like the, the e-com team. And then we have adapted our producer organization diagnostic uh, to align with, um, so that both tools align, gender equity index for farmer organizations, gender equity index for extension and advisory service providers. And so the program that Kelly's uh, talking about is uh, our online program uh, where the farmer organizations take the gender equity index we uh, are now in the process where we're reviewing the gender equity index with them and having them develop a SWOT and some sort of a SWOT analysis that then will inform their gender equity development plan. And then the idea is that by having that gender equity development plan in place, roasters like Kelly or uh, company um, traders uh, like Cacao Latitudes and others can actually invest in moving those organizations forward in the priority areas that they identify. Um, and so it's a it's a cementing of that that partnership as as both Kelly and Pam have alluded to. So making that investment and that support for uh, organizations along their gender equity journey. So and this investment is really stretching um uh is is stretching from women's coffee and market access into inclusive coffee um and and i think that's one of the things that i really heard loud and clear from you kelly is is this desire to 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 not see sort of a, a segregated parallel coffee market with women only but actually a coffee industry that is providing equal opportunity and benefit uh, to both men and women at every location in, in the in the supply chain, particularly at origin. Thanks. Um, I do. We have a few minutes for questions, and I do see um, several, a couple of questions up here. So um, let's see. Pam, are you able to see the questions too? There's one from. Um, uh, Let's see. Um, responding to Pam's comment that men are often the registered farmers, making sure that family farms are registered under multiple names. Uh, it creates the opportunity to structurally for engaging with women on the farm and corporate policy to register multiple farmers and consider women to be farmers. So this, this whole idea of um, farmer registration, is that something that uh, you all look at at Eddie, come, you want to speak to that? Yeah, definitely. It's, I mean, it's something that's been, it's kind of legacy of certification and that kind of thing that, that there's one registered farmer, but it's something we've definitely been talking about a lot lately about how we can change that. So, because ultimately our vision is sustainable households, not individual sustainable farmers. So we want, you know, how can we improve all our practices, including data collection to, to make that happen? Um, because also, I mean, one thing we've talked a lot about how the GEI can help us reach more farmers, but it also makes it introspective. It helps us look at our own organization and how within our own organization, we can make change. So we have a lot of male field technicians. Why is that? Why are we not attracting women into those positions and how can we change things so that changes as well? Because we also know, you know, the impact of having female technicians has on young women in these communities or other you know women on these farms in terms of what's actually possible it doesn't have to be a, a male agronomist it can be a female agronomist so um yeah just looking it, it's it's a good point to look at that the gi also helps us look introspectively to to kind of address those issues as well great thanks uh, another question about um, certifications and the link between the gender equity index and certifications. Um, maybe maybe I'll start, and then uh, Greg, if you want to jump in, both of you, and Kelly and Pam as well. So um, just to highlight that specifically, the gender equity index is around 
um, the capacity, building the internal capacity of farmer organizations and specifically extension and advisory service providers to be able to deliver services in a way that reach and benefit women equally to men. And also look at over time, uh, empower, empowering women and um, transforming the circumstances in, in the context in which um, women work both in coffee and cocoa and more broadly in agriculture. And so the uh, certainly the tool is a, um, um, uh, it aligns with certification, it supports certification in terms of um, the ability of companies to then act on the new information from the, from the gender equity index and incorporating into their gender equity development plan. But it, it really is about building the internal capacity of companies to deliver their services in an, in an equitable way. Greg, I, you wanna add in there? Um, no, I think you covered that well. And, and the only other point that I'd like to make is I, in the chat, I did put a link to the sign up page mm. for the gender equity index. And it's uh, just so that you know, uh, it is free to use. Um, we, we, we didn't want any barriers uh, in, in the way of the utilization of this tool. So by all means, uh, sign up for an account, get your email verified, log in and begin to take, uh, there's, there's a there's an organization type that you can select called demo, demo service provider or demo uh, producer organization. Um, highly, um, uh, and here's a link here and a QR code too to make it easier for you as well. Um, but this is, uh, we, we really hope that uh, most of the people on this call will sign up and will explore the document. Uh, you're, you'll be offered an opportunity to download the guidance document, which further explains the rationale of the domains and also the methodology. And, and then finally, um, what the, the industry has come back to us and said, boy, we, we really like what we see. Um, but how do we get started? We've got a big team. We've got executive management. We've got agronomists. We've got just how do we begin to move forward on this? And so um, uh, Kimberly and I have developed uh, a, a program called Better Together. Um, and this is where we introduce the tool, we utilize the tool, we do some analysis of the results of the tool. And, and really the objective of that is, is a gender equity development plan. And so that's the, the service that, uh, uh, that uh, Equal Origins is providing broadly is, is the analysis of the gender equity index and a plan development, which is obviously a very collaborative effort and, and, uh, and requires knowledge of where are we in order to map out where are we going from here. Thanks, Greg. Well, we're uh, just at time here and I want to underscore, we invite everyone to sign up and uh, take a look at the tool, sign up for the demo, go ahead and run through it, go all the way to the end and fill it out and then download your report. I think that's where you'll really see, uh, you'll, you'll get access to all of the recommendations and you'll see the power of, of the process and, and the tool itself. Um, please do reach out to us with questions, and uh, we'd love to uh, engage with you further. I want to highlight that this really is a growing collaboration. You can see the many companies and, and organizations that have already invested in this work and are uh, beginning to engage on the Better Together program. So uh, we, we invite you to, to participate because I've, as we've each been underscoring, every single one of us has a role. Gender equity is not a sideline marginal issue. It is a human rights issue that we all need to take on board in the work that we're doing to drive uh, a better world for, all of, for, for farmers uh, and their families around the world. So I wanna again thank from the bottom of my heart, Pam and, and Kelly, um, just to have your partnership, uh, not only your participation today, uh, but your partnership over time. Really, we, we wouldn't be here without having uh, partners and advocates like you. And uh, so just really wanna thank you for your time today and all of that you've done so far and this journey that we're on together. Um, Greg, thanks to you for your role and thanks to all of you for joining us today. Uh, this video will be online on our YouTube channel, 
also will be circulating that link uh, next week. And um, we look forward to more conversations. So, so thanks again, everyone.